All right, ready? Today I'm working on this fun project or what I hope to be a fun project. This is a early Sportster front end K model and we're gonna retrofit it. We're gonna take these trees off, retrofit it to fit these trees, which I believe are later Triumph 66 to 69 trees. The reason we wanna do that is these are slightly narrower, so it's gonna narrow the front up as well as we wanna run some 7 8 handlebars and it has this built-in cool riser cast 7 8 handlebar deal. We're gonna have to machine this little guy off the stem. Uh, this is already one inch, so one inch bearing should fit fine. We're gonna have to bore the diameter of these trees out or of the lower tree because that measures 32.7 and it needs to fit 33.4 front end. Yeah, so we're gonna see how this goes. If it works well, I think it's gonna be cool to have this style riser built into the top tree. It's gonna bring the handlebars a little closer uh, to me on the bike as I'm riding it. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. We'll report back soon. All right, so the first problem we ran into was this bearing surface here. The diameter is too big. I guess some British diameter, it's larger. So we're gonna machine this down to one inch. That way our one inch bearing that we're gonna use will slip right over that. So what I did, I machined just this piece of tubing. I machined it to fit the uh, same diameter of what this currently is. And that's gonna act as the lathe dog, as they say. And then I also machined this piece of aluminum. I'm gonna use that as a center. So it'll locate the center of this. And then this live center here. So this dead center will locate this. This live center on this side will locate this end to keep all this straight while machining it. So the way I'm gonna do that, just lock in against the dead center, tighten the tailstock directly against the front of this and lock all that in. So now, only thing that's keeping this from moving is the chuck jaw. So once that's locked against the chuck jaw, we're good. We can machine the forces that will be applied by cutting will be then applied right into that jaw. I also rotated the tool holder to make sure we have enough clearance between the top of the tree here and the edge of the tool. So we grab some safety glasses, but just dry run, everything clears, rotates fine. We should be able to get all the way into that corner with the tool. It's close, but she clears, she clears. So the next thing we're gonna do is actually start machining this down to one inch. All right, so I took a couple rough passes. I'm gonna measure this diameter to see where I'm at and then uh, turn the rest down accordingly. More. Yeah, so it was like just enough to clean up that piece right off of it. Sand it, clean it up a bit more, and then test fit. The other thing I want to do, there's like a couple burrs on this. So I just want to kind of brush over the whole stem while I have it checked up. All right, so now the hope is this bearing will slip all the way down. Oh yeah, all right, so. It's a little tight, but it'll slip, I can tell. I don't want to press it on yet, but pull that good. All right, so that's the first thing done. Got to pull this back out. Next thing we got to do is bore the diameter of both of these out. So we pulled the bolts out of here, these pinch bolts, and we added some shims. That way when we clamp this in the mill, it doesn't actually pinch the tree. We machined a one inch groove, so that mates there, and that'll be used to clamp against here. And then we're just going to use this parallel, which sits perfectly flush on these flats right here. Boom, like that. And then I just gotta make sure I leave at least one side overhanging the vise because when we use the boring bar to go into it, obviously we don't want it to bottom out in the vise. All right, so I got parallel in place, got this aluminum deal that we made in place and we're overhanging and I'm flat. All right, clamp. Yep. All right, so now we're gonna indicate this hole in to read zero all the way around as far as the diameter goes, as close as we can. It's not gonna be fully concentric and then read zero up and down as well. Can I just eye it up first? It's okay. You're boring around anyway. Cut to one hour later. <laughs> this hole is ovaled, so we did the best we can as far as uh, finding the middle ground of being indicated. So you'll see it move a little bit, but she's pretty close. Do you like the uh, handy dandy Mitch hammer slash open end wrench? Polished stainless. All right, I gotta get these tools ready. The old snap on. Right now, I'm just adjusting the boring head to get it. I got to move this entire dovetail in because right now, if you see it, it's cutting larger diameter than this hole. 
So anyway, I just got to move the tool to the center. So you got to loosen these. It's going to be close to hitting that. I think it'll be okay. All right, so we ran into our first issue. When you bring the boring bar all the way in, before the tool gets to the bottom, it hits this little washer shin that we put in there. So we're just gonna take a cutoff wheel and trim the top of that off. All right, now test fit. We're not cutting anything yet, but. All right, and I'm just gonna adjust this so I don't go any deeper than that. This is just a stop I'm setting for the depth on how deep I should bore. And I don't, wanna, I don't want the tool to be spinning and then me hit the top of this washer, so I'm just setting that there as a safety precaution. And then at least the tool's through the bottom, so it'll let us know when the tool reaches through the bottom of the tree, which I believe is right there, maybe a little less. Yeah, and we got clearance from the top of the washer, so should be good there. All right. I'm just creeping up on it until I hear it cut. Right there. So we're right at zero there. That's crazy, it hits on the top and the bottom. At least we know we're indicated vertically. Is nice. That's a nice. I need some tools. All right, cool, cool, cool. Uh, we got a half millimeter to go. If you want to talk metric, boys, twenty-five thou to go, something like that. Yeah, it looks really good, actually. I'm at thirty-three point two, right there. So I just got a little bit to go. All right, so we just bored this side out. This side should slip. I guess we could check it uh, before we go too much further, but this side should slip right over those 33.4 sports trees. Uh, we haven't done anything to this side yet, so we still have to bore this side out. After we bore that side out, we're gonna test fit everything, put it on, and, and hopefully it fits fine and we don't have to do anything else. So we'll see you soon. All right, so we finished boring both of these out. Hopefully the diameter is good. We're about to slip it over these legs. And from there, hoping everything goes together somewhat smooth. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. There we go. Voila. So this already has a, a taper on it, which is really, really, really close to the taper that comes on a stock Harley fork tube. And we think it's close enough to run. So we're just gonna put this top tree on as is until we need to make a change accordingly. Oops. And so that'll thread on there. Slip right into the tree. That kind of threads right in there where it should. Um, these are gonna need a little modification. Look at this, Mitch. So if you see how it's got that O-ring and also the fork tube is sitting basically directly up top of the top clamp. So we're gonna have to figure out what we're gonna do here to get that threaded all the way in and sealed. A little more work. That's what's next. But anyway, get the overall vibe. It's a, it. it's a little skinnier than a stock K model. And then after we figure all this out, we're gonna have to figure out the front wheel and the front wheel spacing. We're gonna use a uh, an iron head front drum, a hamburger drum, not the K model one, but hopefully all, everything aligns fine. All right, so we got everything buttoned up on the front end. Still needs like a, a little bit of fine tweaking, but overall, She's done, super, super stoked on it. I think it's really cool how the bars are offset back and they're much tighter and, and closer to you. Again, this is a early Sportster front end and then these are later 60s Triumph trees, bottom and top tree. That's the front end, super stoked on it. Subscribe, comment, like. I think that's the reverse order. <laughs> Close enough, right?